hi everyone. I ju just wanted to show you some features of the S1 Viewer application called Subdroid that I created for the Android platform. Um, so for the demo, I'll use the donate version of Subdroid. Um, Subdroid is currently available as a free and a donate version. And the donate version contains some advanced features like easy file downloads and an update service that notifies you when new changes have been committed to the repository. So when you first start up Subdroid, you'll find probably this screen. Pretty basic, huh? There's a pre-configured SVN repository called Demo that you can play around with. So one of the key concepts when using this app, or when, when using Android in, in general, I think, is um, that you can long press on, on stuff, in this case on list items. For example, on this repository name demo, um, when you long press on it, a context menu pops up, and it offers you different options to choose from. For example, view log, that's the same as when you simply click or tap on the um, list item. We will show what that does later. Um, the browser repository option, we will cover that later too. The modify repository and the delete repository. Let's first check out the log feature. Um, so in this case we just started with the application and there are no log items yet and we're told to press the menu key to refresh. So that's what we do, we press the menu key and choose the refresh option. Now a request is sent to the server and the server sends us back the most recent changes for this repository. The items are downloaded and stored locally and they are displayed. This may take some time depending on what kind of phone you're using and what connection you're on. And if the connection is very flaky or the connection is lost in between, you might have to wait for a long time and eventually get a timeout. But I'm currently working on that and trying to improve that. So when it finished downloading the log items, um, what you can see then are the different um, log items or commits that reside in your repository. For example, here you can see on the top left the revision number and follow um, are the action icons that are displayed here. By the way, thanks for the Trojus project for sharing the icons. Um, to the right of that, you guessed it, it's the date that this change happened and the name of the user that committed this revision. And underneath of this, you can see the, um, the check-in or commit message. Um, once you click such an item, it will pop up with the entry, will expand. And what you can see, there are the different files that have been changed in this uh, revision, this commit, and the action that was performed. For example, here we added, uh, added PNG drawable. The individual entries in there that are displayed in blue are even clickable. So I'll show you that by clicking on this example image here. And when you click on it, it will pop up a new dialog where you can choose what to do, what kind of action to perform. For example, you download the latest revision or the la latest version of the file, you could download the specific version that you clicked on, you could download the previous version, for example um, if you already deleted this file or deleted this file within this commit, um, then downloading the head or downloading the current revision would yield an error. Um, so you could download the previous revision and get the file or you could choose to open it in your browser. When you choose to download it, the file will be downloaded to your SD card and there will be a new um, directory created called Subdroid and underneath it will, uh, for each um, repository name that you create, there will be created uh, a new directory created and 
you can open or you can navigate there with, with for example the Astro file manager so we download this picture and we can now choose to open it and view it within Android well yeah beautifully so yeah basically that's it what you can do from here um, the items are stored on your phone so you can browse them even without an uh, internet connection and uh, well yeah to, to save some space maybe later or not to, to get the to, to, to keep the list uh, maybe short yeah uh, you can choose to, to clear it like so so when pressing the back button you'll be back to the main menu I have a few different options to add a repository to start the update service to show the preferences to show the help so let's start the update service and give you just a show how you work this test. When you do that, the server will be queried from time to time that can be uh, specified in the preferences. We'll show that later, just in a minute. And well, the update service will check if the log entries you have in your phone are up to date. If new changes have been committed meanwhile, it will show a notification. So let's just do that. And there it goes. You now have two notifications in there, one that lasts forever, uh, or as long as the update service is running, and one that is really a uh, notification that tells you, okay, your demo repository has a remote revision of 6, local, now, so you probably should update it. But there are new changes that you haven't uh, seen yet. When you click on that notification, uh, it will bring you right to the repository view where you can choose to refresh the log to review the new log items, like so. Like I already showed before. And you can then choose to stop the update service again, and then this icon up there and the ongoing notification will be removed. Um, let's just explore the preference a bit more. What you can do there is to choose what kind of feedback you want to receive from the update service when a new commit is found. You can change how often um, the new update should be checked for, like 15 minutes or maybe daily is enough for you. Um, you can enable or disable the service notification, the ongoing notification that we saw just a couple minutes before and you can also decide what you do with the file that you're downloading um, they sh should be try to be opened as soon as they finished and you might want to check this fall back to text so for file type that android doesn't know how to open they can be opened as text as text files with text editor And finally, you can change the way the back button is behaving in browsing. Uh, regarding browsing, let's check this out. To open the, the browsing view, you long press on a repository and choose Browse Repository. What you can see here then is the revision of the resource and uh, obviously the name when it was last changed and who changed it. <coughs> so to navigate you simply click on a folder and you can then use the back button to navigate up again. Pressing the back button repeatedly will get you back or out of this screen and back to the main screen. So sometimes there are folders that contain dots and subdrives simply things, files with dots or resources with dots in them are documents and resources with out dots are folders. So this might not be true in any case. And to control what should be done with a resource, simply long click on it. You can then choose to download the current version of it, download the previous version, open the current or previous version, or navigate there. So you occasionally would have to um, 
to this navigate he there or this download here um, when you use files that don't contain dots or folders that do contain dots. If you try to download folders in any case you will experience an error. So what I was going to show you was that I want to show you that the preference screen we already covered that so let's um, just show let me show you the modified repository or it's almost the same with the new repository or add repository um, screen you can edit the name here you have to provide a base URL and this should point to the location your um, repository resides um, Subdrive currently only supports the uh, SVN through HTTP protocol. This means SVN colon slash slash. Uh, this SVN protocol is not supported. Um, you will have to use um, uh, SVN in combination with the Apache model to use Subdrive with it. Um, and this should point up to the path where your SVN root directory is. Then the path should or can contain your or a specific directory structure, for example, trunk project one, uh, and then source. You are only interested in source changes, not in resource changes, for example. Then you can provide a username and a password if the server requires authentication. You can choose to remember or to forget the password. And then you'll have to um, re-enter it every time and the update service won't work for this kind of repository. Um, when you use a repository that is protected by HTTPS, um, chances are pretty high that the certificate you're using is a self-signed one. And in this case you must um, choose to ignore SSL certificates because currently there's no option to install a um, self-signed certificate to Subdroid to, to make it known to Subdroid so I have to ignore them altogether for only for this specific uh, repository. Maybe a good tip is to only use accounts that have read access only so that's something to consider maybe in general if you're using uh, unprotected Wi-Fi hotspots for example. Um, this here sh show changes decide so if, if you uncheck this yeah um, in the in the log view you'll see only the name, date, um, the revision number and the commit message and no um, no files that were changed within. Uh, so this decreases the amount of data that is downloaded but well it's not that useful anymore then and you can also specify the number of revisions that should be downloaded each time and if this repository um, should be included when starting the update service so well I think that basically um, covers the, the main features that are currently in there um, there's some help in there, some, some text, some really basic stuff, um, version history, and you can uh, use this button to send me feedback. Uh, that's not working on my emulator currently, but yeah, it, it probably will on your device. So yeah, well, um, enjoy uh, using Subdroid. I'm really interested in open on your comments, on your feedback, so don't hesitate to send me a mail. Or, um, also looking for contributors for the open source or free version so just just drop me a line if you're interested in contributing some code doing something there improving the software experience so well yeah that, that that concludes that i think and yeah thanks for listening have fun browsing your svm bye